Hello, my name is John Krasuski, captain and founder of Armada Brewing, and I'm here today to give you 10 tips on how to make great tasting craft beer every single time. So sit back, grab yourself a pint, and enjoy the show. Cheers. Step number one, make yourself a yeast starter. You want to make a yeast starter a couple days before your brew day. I personally like to make a yeast starter three days before my brew. I can't emphasize enough on the importance of making a yeast starter for your beers. 90% of the off flavors I detect in beers can be traced back to yeast health. Making a yeast starter is definitely going to help make sure that your beer is nice and clean tasting, your fermentation is healthy, and you're going to have a great beer in the end result. Step number two, get yourself a thermometer. Whether it's digital, dial, or lab thermometer, you want to make sure that your thermometer is calibrated and accurate. To ensure that you're getting consistent results on each batch, you want to make sure that you're holding your mash at the proper temp, and the only way to do that is to have a great, accurate thermometer. I personally recommend this digital thermometer from Thermalworks. It has a 24 inch probe and you can rest it in the kettle or in the mash tun and you do not have to worry about it falling in and getting ruined. Step number three, use a hydrometer. They broke my hydrometer. Don't break this one, Johnny. Step number three, use your hydrometer. In order to make consistent, great tasting beer, you need to take measurements along the way. Take readings at three places, pre-boil, post-boil, also known as original gravity, and final gravity. Keeping track of these numbers is going to make sure that you can consistently make great tasting beer over and over again. Another device you can use for taking gravity readings is a refractometer. Refractometer is great for taking gravity readings pre-fermentation. After fermentation has taken place, I don't recommend using one of these. The alcohol in the liquid will cause the refractometer to give you inaccurate readings and you may think your fermentation has not completed when it has. Step number four, get yourself some scales. I recommend grabbing two different types of scales, one for grams and ounces as well as one for kilograms and pounds. You're definitely going to want a small scale to measure out your hops as well as your brewing salts and yeast nutrients. You're going to want the larger scale to measure out specialty malts as well as your base malts. You cannot eyeball it and expect to get consistent results. I don't know any professional brewery that doesn't use scales to measure out their ingredients. If you want to make consistent, great tasting beer, one of the best tips I can give you is to measure your ingredients every batch. Step number five, get yourself a brewing software. Whether it's Beersmith, Beer Alchemy, Beer Target, Brewer's Friend, Beer Tools, get one of them. There's plenty of free ones and there's ones you can pay for. I personally recommend Beersmith. Brad Smith has made an excellent software that I've used for years now and I have not been let down with it. I like to use a brewing software because it allows me to log all of my recipes, keep detailed notes on them, as well as make any adjustments that need to be made throughout my brew day. Step number six, use yeast nutrient and world flock tablets. Both of these ingredients will help you make better beer. Think of yeast nutrient as steroids for your yeast. It's going to give it a boost of energy and the food it needs to do the proper job you want it to do. Using world flock tablets or Irish moss will allow you to create a more presentable looking beer. For the best results, use world flock and yeast nutrient in the last 10 to 15 minutes of your boil. Step number seven, oxygenate your wort. It is important to oxygenate your wort right before you add the yeast. And it's the only time in the process where you want to add oxygen to your beer. The best way to add oxygen to your beer is through a stone. You can pick up a variety of oxygen stones all throughout the internet, but I highly suggest checking out williamsbrewing.com. Williams Brewing offers this beautiful oxygen stone for a fairly good value, and you can start oxygenating your beer through a centered stone. In addition to the oxygen wand, you're gonna wanna use an oxygen tank, and you can pick those up at Home Depot for about $9. You can get quite a bit of uses out of them. The oxygen regulator that's on top of this came with the oxygen wand that I picked up at williamsbrewing.com. Step number eight, get yourself a pH meter. A pH meter is gonna be your best friend in creating great tasting beer. The most important part of the brewing process is to get your mash pH where it needs to be. You want to have a mash pH of 5.2. Getting your pH to that range is going to ensure that the pH throughout other processes are going to be where it needs to be. The only way to get an accurate reading 
is to have a quality pH meter. There's a variety of pH meters you can pick up on the market. I'm sure you can find one for around $20 on Amazon. The best one I've ever found is this HANA pH meter. It has not let me down. I've had the same meter for about four years now. Step number nine, and this is one of the most important steps of making great tasting beer batch after batch. It's cleaning and sanitizing. I'm sure you've heard it a hundred times before, but I can't emphasize enough on this part of the brewing process. I save it towards the end because I know you didn't want to hear it up front, but I'm going to give it to you now. Cleaning and sanitizing. You can't sanitize a dirty surface. You want to make sure every piece of equipment that comes in contact with your beer is cleaned, rinsed, then sanitized. You're going to want to use a food safe cleaner and sanitizer and that does not include bleach please do not ever use bleach to clean or sanitize your equipment i do not want to have heartburn and neither do your friends bleach is by far the worst advice anybody can give somebody on how to clean and sanitize your equipment for brewing never ever 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 use bleach i'm going to recommend pbw as your cleaner pbw has not let me down and there's plenty of professional breweries that still use it to this day. PBW is super easy to use at about a tablespoon per gallon of hot water. Make sure it's not hot and scalding where you're gonna burn yourself, but something where you can actually touch the water. When it comes to sanitizing now, I'm gonna recommend two products. I'm gonna recommend IOSTAR, and I'm gonna also recommend Star Sand. The sanitizers are super easy to use, and they're both used at the same exact strength. You're gonna use one ounce for five gallons. These are two great sanitizers you can find at your local homebrew shop. Actually, all three you can find at your local homebrew shop. I personally like to switch things up to keep the bugs guessing. I work with Britannomyces, as well as Lactobacillus, as well as Saccharomyces, and my homebrew setup. I want to make sure that those bugs are getting killed no matter what. So I will switch between IOSTAR and Star Sand. It's important that every home brewer and professional brewer pay attention to cleaning and sanitizing. You don't want any cross contaminations giving you off flavors or a bad product that could be spoiled from microbes. So when you clean and sanitize properly, you're going to ensure that your beer is going to taste the way you had projected it to be, and you're not going to get any type of off flavors or contamination. Step 10, temperature control. Having control of your temperature is super important to making sure the beer tastes the way that you wanted it to taste. Each yeast has a temperature range in which it works best. For ales, it's typically around 65 to 75 Fahrenheit. And then you have your lagers, which is typically 45 to 55. Now those numbers can vary, but I'm giving you the idea. Keeping control of that temperature is going to make sure that the beer tasted the way it's supposed to. And in order to do that, you want to get yourself some sort of temperature control. Now I can't pick up my fridge and bring it to you for the sake of this video, but I'll show you the temperature controllers in which I use. This is a Johnson Controls digital thermostat. How it works is I plug my refrigerator into this thermostat, set the temperature of where I want the fermentation to be, and place the probe next to the fermenter. The controller takes care of turning the refrigerator on and off to make sure that the temperature of the fermentation stays where I want it to be. There's plenty of do-it-yourself instructions online how to make your own digital thermostat. Having control of your fermentation temperatures is going to make sure that your beer tastes the way you want it to be. All you need is to get yourself a refrigerator, get yourself a thermostat, and you can start taking control of your own fermentation. So that's it. Those are my 10 tips on how to make great tasting craft beer every single time. If you like this video, click subscribe. And if you haven't done so already, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We also invite you to come down to our brewery when we're open and bring your home brew in to share with us. We have plenty of beers to share with you, and we hope we can provide you with a great craft beer experience. Thank you for watching.